Hi girls and guys, um, welcome to this video. We'll talk about this beautiful mare. Uh, just a little um, highlight on her feet. She's, uh, uh, she's pigeon toed, so I wanted to highlight to you what that means, more or less in terms of feet, uh, more specifically for her, because that can be different, different depending on the horse. Um, so we can see um, the green line, that's uh, the impact line, I mean where the, the, um, the, the back of the feet is strongest. And then we have one red line, which is for um, the medial heel, so the internal heel. And the blue line, light blue line, that's for the um, uh, lateral heel, so external heel. That's her front left um, foot. And I wanted to show you a couple difference. So the angle is not ideal. Uh, it could have been straighter, but I just captured it from the it's a screenshot from the video uh, that I have. Uh, but you can, I mean, I can still show you the main differences um, just with this picture. So we can see that the light blue line is shorter than the red one. Uh, the red one is also slightly more angled. And you also see an important difference between the two bars. So the medial bar, which is represented by the pink line, is uh, is also quite angled, is um, a little bit pulled outside. The blue line representing the lateral bar is straighter, much straighter. Um, with the orange and medium blue line, <laughs> I wanted to um, um, show a little bit of the um, heel height difference. Uh, again, the angle is not optimal, so if we would have been I mean, if the angle would have been more uh, centered, then that would have been more obvious. But here you still see that there's a slight difference um, between both. So that's, um, that's interesting to keep in mind. And while watching the video again, um, I noticed other interesting points, um, which are more from the behavioral side. Um, yeah, you see it's very muddy. I highly recommend you not to trim your horses with so much mud. Um, I mean, I had to deal with, you know, the, the, the environment and what the owner can do and stuff. But if you're doing uh, your own trimmings, then just, you know, spare your, 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 <laughs> your life or your, your energy because it's always slippery. Uh, all the tools are slippery and uh, it damages the tools quite um, quite a bit. So, um, yeah, I noticed during this stream, it took me almost 10 minutes per feet, per foot, when it usually takes me half that time with this mare. Um, when I started with her, she had uh, quite a few behavioral issues. Um, because she was a little bit manhandled by the previous uh, hoof care provider. Um, so she would kick, she would lean on me, almost fall on me and everything. Uh, but now it's been uh, maybe a year and a half or so. And after a couple of trims, she, that went away. She has temperament, uh, so you need to listen to what she says and stuff. But she's been really good and... Um, and yeah, you just need to pay attention not to piss her off, that's all. That time, she was being very difficult. So I started with the left front foot. I don't really have a regular um, order which foot I trim, but this time I started with the uh, left front foot. I don't know if I said right. So that's the left front foot. Uh, and it turned out that the left front and the right hind were really difficult that day. Um, the left hind was also difficult, but not as much as the uh, right hind. So I advised the, the owner to book for a Cairo appointment for her because I think either the lumbar area or hip area was a little bit tensed. Um, 
and she would um I, I didn't add the, the trim for the back legs in this um, in this uh, video because it would have been way too long. I mean, 10 minutes per, per foot, it's just way too much. But she would fall on me. She would have the legs stuck up and going to the side a little. And you can see now, I, they, I just kept my patience with her. I never yelled at her or anything because that really 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 doesn't work for most horses but not especially not this one um so i really kept my cool encouraging her when she was doing well and stuff i just went along uh was doing my cardio thanks to her uh you see she she just keeps pulling the leg i know she's quiet um, so yeah, that was a little bit of, um, of uh, an unusual behavior for her. So that's why I noticed almost uh, immediately. Um, so the goal with her is to mainly work the internal um, parts of her feet because this is from the previous drawing I showed you. Uh, this is where she grows the most. So because she's um, pigeon toed and varus, um, she tends to use the outside more and to roll her feet this way. Yeah, you see the mud, that's really, it's all slippery, I can't hold the leg. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, that, that, that wasn't ideal, but you know, uh, the owner couldn't do, couldn't do differently. So yeah, I'm just um, working on the inside of the foot, so the, the medial side. The bars, mainly the medial bar, I'm trying to, uh, to straighten it a little bit. And here I'm just taking the outside bar a little bit down. Always careful not to take the heel away in that movement so yeah i'm so glad about this rasp in those condition um because with my savage i, I used to have a savage uh, rasp before and um, the 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 mud would always clog in the in the rasp whereas with the cody james it never happens and it's really really um efficient uh in any situation so yeah i'm struggling keeping her foot uh at the same time it doesn't work with her to just hold it she just gets claustrophobic or something uh plus i'm i really don't have the strength to to fight with her anyways so if that happens to you, I'd suggest that maybe you, if that's not an unusual behavior for your horse, then I'd contact a chiro to have a checkup. Um, I'm really looking forward to know what, uh, what was happening for her. Uh, that could have been the weather because it was cold and hot and cold and hot at that time very wet uh, i mean all all the horses were, were struggling it was in um, in spring um, and if it's unusual behavior then work on the education because that will that will save you time as i said usually it takes me approximately 20 minutes to trim her uh, this time it took took me over 40 minutes um, plus we had to do small breaks to allow her to walk. Another technique I used uh, for the front legs, that was okay, but for the back legs, I used a technique I used for foals, um, horses that are not very patient or older horses that have arthritis, sorry, arthritis. Um, when they can't stand or lift one leg for too long. So I would just swap legs. Uh, so for the back uh, legs, 
what I did is I, I started with the right hand. Um, I did a little bit, then I felt that it was becoming a little bit too much for her um, because she was really holding her leg and it was like um, she would not just put it down on my knee like she usually does relaxed and so that I can work she was really lifting it um, and because you saw she's chunky <laughs> must have used a lot of, uh, of energy just to do this so I did a little break I went to the other back leg um, which I did in one go and then I went back to the uh, right hind so yeah I'm always patient with her she, she pulls it away but you see, it's not uh, just a behavioral issue like pure temperament because she can give it back. When it's really a punny um, stubbornness, then there's no way you get the foot back. You know, the, <laughs> the pun is just uh, anchored into the ground. Whereas that's not the case. I ask for the leg and she gives it back. It's just uncomfortable for her she 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 struggles to find the yeah we did a little break here yeah before i couldn't touch her she wouldn't allow me to um to just pet her and stuff uh, i mean she's very merish as well so that might play so yeah you see the medial heel that's really angled towards the the inside whereas the other one is much straighter so i just um, work the medial bevel more than the outside the outside the the, the lateral bevel will just be to um to refrain from chipping and everything and just to um take off a little bit from the um, outer wall support uh, although she uses it uh, she wears it sorry uh, quite nicely so yeah it's packed with mud <laughs> oh, I'm so happy this uh, season is over so she has thrush in generally speaking I don't believe um, um, she has daily treatment. Uh, that's my dog. Uh, Dakota, basta. So sorry, my dog interrupted. So I think we're about this part. Uh, so yes, yeah, she has thrush. The frog was shedding. Um, the owner is currently using Cade oil which is a natural oil I, look it up or maybe i'll put it in the description um i know it's it's produced in south of france i don't know if it's produced anywhere else in the in the world uh, but i've had several owners quite happy with it um i believe it, it's not optimal for her um the cade oil is good but um uh she might not receive um the treatments regularly enough so that's why um it's uh, it's a little bit of a struggle plus as you see the the paddock is i mean it's a it's not a paddock it's a huge pasture um it's just that they have hay in one spot so they just stand in in knee high mud um I mean, we all do what we can um, with the husbandry and stuff, but so yeah, I'm working on the hill bevel. Not all horses like this, um, but I found found that it helps for this horse. Um, it maintains the heels small and it helps with the frog. So I've yeah, I've because it was really long and it's. It, they are the same feet, more or less, so I've just um, fast forwarded this one. I wanted to show you that she was much quieter on this foot than the, than the other front. Uh, 
which to me confirms the problem with the um, left diagonal, so the left front and the right hind, mainly. Although she was uneasy in both her hind legs, but... So yeah, it's the same, I'm working on the uh, medial bar, lateral bar. You see how much more to the side the medial bar is. It's a little bit flat to put both both sides at the same level. I'm always starting with mud. <laughs> Yeah, so I've slowed this one down because I wanted to show you another position that can help. I'm going between the front legs because I'm right-handed and I'm not ambidextrous yet. Maybe one day. Um, that was my, um, my plan for this year to work on this, but I never have the patience. So I just put my hand between the front legs and I um, put the leg on my thigh, uh, the knee on my thigh, and I can just work from inside. So that works because I'm right-handed, that works for the um, right front, but not for the left, obviously. So that's a useful technique. And sometimes for falls, it's also nice because they feel more secure. Uh, you can't always um, work with the hoof jack with falls or so you can just put it in your legs without having to have the proper farrier posture where you put the legs, the front leg between your legs. Um, I don't really do it with falls. So yeah, that's the end. I think she will give me a nice present. So yeah, hope that was helpful.